There are jobs and then there are careers. The Department of Home Affairs provides you with opportunities to challenge yourself and learn new skills while contributing to the protection and prosperity of Australia. We are looking for graduates who will grow with us into the future. Strong leadership, shared values and culture and a professional workforce are essential to our success. Our graduate program will launch your career, helping you to gain experience. You will build your knowledge, skills and networks through exposure to a diverse range of roles across the department. The program also offers orientation and induction, a great support team and a mentor. We are looking for people who are as diverse as the community we serve. We believe our differences drive innovation and our varied backgrounds help to broaden our perspective. The skills and knowledge you have gained through university and work experience can be of great value to this department and make a difference to all Australians. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us this evening for the Department of Home Affairs 2019 Graduate Development Program Facebook Live Chat. Uh, two of us will be here this evening for the next 45 minutes to answer any questions you might have for us. We'll also be joined by a number of senior executive officers who will be talking about their experiences in the department and also the many opportunities that are offered to grads throughout the year. So before we do that, let's uh, introduce ourselves. I am Jazz. Uh, my background is health science. Um, I'm from Sydney and I'm a 2018 grad. My name's Shanae. Thank you, Jazz. My name's Shanae. I am... I did a Bachelor of Forensic Science and a Bachelor of Criminology. I'm from Queenscliff, which is a very small town in Victoria, and I'm actually a 2017 grad, so I'm finished and I'm fully employed in the department now. Um, while we're talking, we'll have a bit more to say, but please remember to keep asking us questions, um, comment below, we'll see them, and we'll ask, answer them live for you. Um, let's begin with some commonly asked questions. Now, it's a bit of a basic one, but it's actually a bit tricky to answer, and that is, what is a graduate program? A graduate program is targeted at university students in their final years of university, as well as people that have recently graduated. It's a paid entry-level position aimed at offering graduates an introduction into the workforce. The program is tailored to provide support and training, formal mentoring and career development planning. It usually consists of multiple rotations to give graduates exposure to the widest range of opportunities, which is huge in this department. Mm. I see it as one big year, basically, networking and mentorship. So Basically. Yeah, really good, <laughs> yeah. Um, so our next question is, what is the application process like? So it's a number of uh, steps that are involved over uh, several months. It's quite a lengthy process. Um, so you need to be ranked for each stage in order to move to the next one. Um, and we do aim to have offers to candidates by August of 2018. Now, I believe there will be a pretty large group um, of applicants and the process is quite lengthy, so, uh, you know, they do their best to get them out as soon as possible. Uh, but, yeah, August is the estimated time. Um, so we've actually got a video that we'll be rolling now about how to apply, so let's take a look at that. Applications for our Graduate Development Program have already opened. You can apply through our website, homeaffairs.gov.au, or on the APS Jobs website. You have until 4pm Australian Eastern Standard Time, Friday the 20th of April, to get your applications in. Once online applications close, there will be a few more steps in the recruitment process for shortlisted candidates, which include online testing, video interviews and assessment centres. Keep a close eye on your emails during this time so you don't miss out on any information. Here are some application tips which you should keep in mind. Research the department, who we are and what we do. Know why you want to work with us and what you can bring to the department. Provide relevant examples from your work, study or community roles. Don't forget to use the STAR method, situation, task, action, result. Be clear and to the point. If a word or page limit is set, make sure you stick to it. And of course, check your responses for grammar, spelling and punctuation. And lastly, make sure you check our Facebook group for more info and updates over the next few weeks. So hopefully that video answered a lot of your questions. Now we are uh, lucky enough to be joined by Murali Venugopal, uh, the first Assistant Secretary of the People Division. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us, Murali. I'm sure you're very busy. It's a pleasure. Uh, we've got a question for you each this evening, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, first question is, you invest obviously a lot of time in the graduates in the program, and I know you definitely did in my year, which was last year. I just wanted to know, 
Are there any specific traits that you consistently see in current years and previous years of graduates that maybe just happens to be chance or maybe the recruitment team are looking for? Yeah, no, absolutely. And thank you for the questions and good to see both of you again. <laughs> um, look, from my point of view, I do invest a lot of time simply because, and, 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 and the main thing that we I look for in, in, in the recruitment process is graduates generally tend to bring this idea of self-agency. Uh, they focus on their careers, uh, they are interested in taking on challenges, they stretch themselves, and they typically put themselves forward for that experience, and that's exactly what we look for. So um, summarizing that, self-agency, the go-getting attitude, uh, curiosity and resilience, that's what we look for. Yeah. And why, why is it that you invest so much time, effort, money into grads? What do they bring to the department, and why do you think it's so important to have grads uh, in and around? Absolutely. Let me first perhaps uh, play it the other way. Uh, let me uh, say what, what we have on offer for the grads uh, and then come back to why grads are important to the department. Um, graduate programs have always been an important part of this department in the various shapes and forms that we've had it. Most recently we became the Department of Home Affairs and we have formed the Portfolio of Home Affairs. That actually makes us a workforce 27,000 strong. Uh, and I think as a department we are the third or fourth largest in the whole of the Commonwealth. Um, and that gives us a great opportunity to be able to offer for the grads a whole range of career opportunities across the board. So as you know, we work across Australia and from around 53 posts all around the world, right? And that is quite a unique opportunity for our grads. They can work anywhere from counterterrorism to migration policy, visa processing to um, cyber policy, accounting, finance, HR, the whole lot, Intel, ICT. So that's what the department has on offer for grads. Uh, we have been growing our graduate program, so it was what I think in your year it was 35. 34, um, yeah. 34, <laughs> and we now have around just under 80, mm -hmm. and I want to keep growing it. Yeah. Uh, what uh, we see in that is obviously these are graduates who are fresh out from universities or new into the workforce. You bring fresh ideas, you bring a perspective which sometimes is lacking in an organization this is that large, where uh, we don't necessarily have the level of turnover um, that you know, large organizations typically don't tend to have. And it's good to have new perspectives come into the organization, and that's fantastic. You mentioned quite a few areas there that the department is interested in, has has sections and stuff in. Could you give us a bit of information maybe about areas you've worked in or the area you're currently working through now? About me? Yeah. Oh, right. Just about, out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So I am the head of the people division, so which essentially means I'm everything HR, uh, including uh, the, the graduate program. Uh, I think because of the virtue of my role, I, I am I'm very um, lucky to get a lot of exposure to all areas of the department. Um, so I'm typically involved in a lot of the decision making, which goes well beyond the remit of pure HR. Uh, and I think bringing it back to our department, that's actually a feature. Uh, we encourage people to get involved. We encourage people to be curious. Uh, and particularly, I think, coming back to grads, I think I said this in, the, in my answer to the first yeah. question, um, it is exactly those kind of values that we're looking for, and not only in your graduates, but across the board. We want our people to be curious. We want our people to be investigative uh, outside uh, work as well as within work uh, and contribute more broadly into work and society. Perfect. And, uh this year was one of the biggest intakes in the department's history, if not the biggest. I'm sure it'll be getting bigger and bigger. How do you see it growing over the next few years, and, and what can grads in the future, um, I suppose the grads watching, what can they expect moving forward? I think they can expect more of this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do hope that we grow to three-digit numbers for exactly the type of reasons that I outlined just a little while ago. Uh, we will continue investing in the graduate program. We will continue getting smarter about the way we invest in the graduate program. Uh, in the past, um, and uh, we have generally uh, tended to not target specific vocations, but I think as the size, complexity, and reach of our, and the remit of our department is increasing, uh, we are going to focus much more on specific vocations over a period of time to be able to grow the skill set in that area. So for instance, in this particular round, we are specifically looking for policy graduates, and there's a reason for that because our remit now as the Department of Home Affairs spans quite a few national security related policy areas. So we want to grow that vocation, we want to invest in it, and we want to have a pathway for graduates in that area. And that's just an example. Similarly, I think you are from forensics. Yes. Um, and, you know, cyber security, uh, forensics, that 
that kind of background is equally important for us. So we will try and focus specifically on certain vocations and grow graduates as well as our own employees through vocational pathways. But it's just the beginning of the journey for the grads, whereas for others, they're already here. I feel like that was quite a few hints for everyone that's now applying <laughs> frantically. Yep, that is it. <laughs> yeah. Rewind it, watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we do thank you very much uh, for your time earlier. We know you're very busy, but uh, yes. we do appreciate, and I'm sure the, the viewers would appreciate the, uh, the comments that you've made and the answers. Not at all. It has been my absolute pleasure. And can I also say that uh, as, as an overall department and its leadership, uh, I certainly don't, and I'm sure my colleagues uh, don't certainly see this as uh, uh, an impost on their time. Uh, this is an important investment that we're making, and I, I, I can promise you that you will not see a single manager who would actually say that not investing in people is a good idea. Um, so I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Again. So we do have some audience questions uh, that we'll be going to, some live questions. Um, we'll get them up bring them up for you. Yeah. Technically apt so. colleague. <laughs> The first one we have is from Bob. What would you be able to describe as a typical day for us as a graduate and or as an employee? Stop. You can have the graduate and oh, have the employee okay, side. Okay. As a graduate, I mean, we're exposed to a lot of different areas, um, experiences. Basically, that's what the whole year for us is about. So we do try, and our managers are very supportive. They do try to get us into a lot of um, you know, different meetings and briefings and, and, and things to to delve into before we uh, go out as fully fledged employee, employees, I guess you could say, uh, to help us sort of decide what we really want to do over the year. And my experience as a graduate was much the same. It was, it was more, you're obviously there to work, but you're definitely there to learn as much as you can because you're not just a regular employee, you're a graduate. So I can definitely agree with that. There's definitely a big difference between transitioning from a graduate to a full-time employee, being that I'm a lot more in charge of what I want to do, like I obviously have my job and I have my standard things, and that changes and adjusts yeah. to what you know, what the question, what's going on in the government at the time. Everything definitely changes very quickly, but it's a lot more set in stone. And to do anything additional, as in today, obviously I put my hand up. I wanted to be a part of this, and I spoke to my supervisor. But like anything that, any direction that you want your career to go, you really have to push it a bit harder. But the graduate program just sets you up so perfectly with that you have. You have so many connections, you know so many people, and you just know so much more about the department. So, yeah. Yeah. Pushing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so you get, you get touch points into every, every different little area that's, uh, that's out there. Uh, our next question, I hope, sorry, thank you. I hope we answered your question, Bob. Our next question is from Stephen. Uh, given that the Department of Home Affairs is relatively new, how is the recruitment process similar to the recruitment or related departments in previous years, i.e. the Department of Immigration and Border Protection? Um, we're following the same assessment process as last year. It's very similar. And from the previous year, I've actually looked at both sides of them as well. Um, Jess, can give you a little run through? Yeah, sure. There's um, Obviously, there's the online application, which is closing in just over two weeks. So uh, definitely get your uh, applications in. Um, plenty of time to do so. Um, after that, we do move to cognitive testing, which is more so about online tests. Um, from there, we progress to video testing. And then finally, the assessment centres, uh, where you'll be working in a lot of teams, uh, doing a bit of an assessment, um, and also having a, an interview in a panel. So uh, it's quite similar to the, to the last few years. I don't think it's changed much from where I was. Uh, the next one, uh, thanks for that, Stephen. By the, way. Uh, the next question we have is how many graduate positions are available this year? Um, as I touched on and Morley touched on, it will be one of the biggest ones in history, uh, so much bigger than uh, this year. We're moving to, to around 100, hopefully, crack that three digit mark that Morley mentioned. Um, it was about 70 to 80 now, but it's, it's can be bigger and better, I guess, next year. As Much we move bigger on. from our 34 from last year, for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got another question from Bob. What do you like most about working at the Department of Home Affairs? What is the most rewarding work that you've done so far? And what do you like least about working at Home Affairs? That's a, that is a tough a one. Big, long question. Yeah. I'll have a go. Um, so working at the Department of Home Affairs, my definite stand, standing out favourite is the fact that it's so big, like there are so many different vocations, there are so many different areas, like I'm traditionally a science student, you wouldn't have thought that you could, a science student could come in the Department of Home Affairs and find mm. so many things available, but I don't even have to stick to the science, like I'm, I've tried policy, I've tried ABF, mm. I've tried support, like I've been able to try everything, so that's a big 
big yay for me. I'd agree. I mean, much the same. I'm coming from a health science background, and, and you wouldn't think traditionally a health science would really fit in with immigration and, and uh, home affairs, I guess. But yeah, it's the ability to move around. Um, you know, it's, it's a 25,000 odd large department. So there's a lot of different sections that we can really move into. Um, and that's, uh, I guess, much like you, that's something I really, really like. Definitely. Uh, the next part of that question was, what's the most rewarding work you've done? I spent last year my second rotation in an investigations division, and that was by far the most rewarding thing I've done, just because I felt like I was receiving work as it came in, like as it was relevant, and I was working on it, and I was giving output that was actually affecting people's lives and actually making a difference in, in what was happening. And, like, it just it really made me feel good. And, like, seeing what I'd done on the news, that was a huge mm. thing for me, yeah, and I felt yeah. like I was really making a difference. Yeah, uh, this was, for me, it's more the small little things that you do that sort of push and help towards a larger larger sort of project. And that's always rewarding to see your work has gone in into a, a much larger project. Um, and finally, what do you least like about working at Home Affairs? Um, I guess I'll start with this one. Um, to be honest, I, I've only been here for uh, you know, over a year, but in the program itself for three months, and I can't really think of any negatives at this stage. Uh, it probably sounds very cliche <laughs> and cheesy, but um, yeah, I, I honestly can't. It's such a big department. You work with a lot of good people, um, and, and the flexibility of, of um, the working uh, environment, and also where you are itself, like, it all sort of, for me, that's all big positives, and I can't really think of any negatives, to be <laughs> honest. So, um, yeah. Um. I guess I, you know, I've been here a little bit of time now. Probably the biggest negative is commuting into the city. It's very <laughs> frustrating. Um, Cam I'd not been to Canberra before I came here, and it's good. It's very small, but it's also public transport session. Public transport has a little bit to be desired. Um, other than that, because it's such a constantly moving, constantly evolving, as a grad, you constantly change position environment, changing your desk, setting it up again, taking it down, shredding everything that you don't need as you move to the next position I found frustrating <laughs> but it can all it's all for the good yeah of course. it's all part of the process I guess so we do thank you for the live questions we will get to those further uh, in the live video as well um, we are going to introduce our next guest thank you very much so here we have as our second guest is David Wilden the first assistant secretary of the international division He'll be sharing with us a bit more about what graduates working in his division will be doing. So thank you for coming, David. My pleasure. Um, look, International Division obviously is um, a, a very oft sought after uh, place to work. Uh, the allure of the international is compelling, and, and I totally understand that. Um, but what we actually offer is more than just that concept of international engagement. We're a hub point for the organisation that brings together the domestic and the international context. We need to be across all domestic issues because we're, we look after our national security, borders, transnational crime, etc. Uh, but at the same time, we need to make sure we're very well connected with uh, our um, counterparts across the world, um, by either through our regional network, uh, through our foreign affairs, etc. So uh, we have sort of a multitude of roles to play. So what a grad gets by coming into a national division is a very good oversight of the whole whole organisation, um, and this is not to downplay the other divisions, because I've run some of them as well, so I wouldn't, wouldn't dream of it, um, but if you work in immigration policy or, or security, you'll get a very deep understanding of a quite a specific area. International gives you the opportunity to, to sit sort of half a layer up and look across and look for those linkages, and as a grad, that's one of the most important skill sets you can learn, is um, how do you draw the links? How do you draw the links between what might be happening over on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, which, if you're in a particular lane you may not see. Uh, so I think we, we offer that. Uh, we also offer obviously as part of the policy group um, and Morley mentioned it before, uh, that, that link to the vocation. Uh, we've done an awful lot of work focusing on the policy vocation and beyond uh, if you like what a grad would get coming to home affairs from a content perspective, I think we are probably more advanced than many other organisations he says using a strong selling pitch um, to actually say to you as a grad coming in, here's your pathway. Here's the skills and capabilities we are going to develop in you over the coming years as you seek to move up the ladder or move across. It's supported by well-structured curriculum, training opportunities, on-the-job development. So we sort of bring together, if you like, under the, the policy framework, both the, the content side, which is fascinating, and hopefully uh, effectively bring together how we actually develop our policy staff, uh, ranging from the day you arrive to the day you decide to go and do something else. 
Fantastic little mm. run through. Thank you very much, David. That's all right. You've very much stolen my first question for you and answered it Excellent. well more than I could have asked. Well, that's so what we do in policy, but we've got to be <laughs> half a step ahead. <laughs> definitely. Um, I can definitely vouch for a lot of what David has said because hopefully he remembers. I was actually his grad for my first rotation last year. I do year. indeed remember that. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll replace my new question with that. But very quiet when they first come in grad, so. Changed a lot. That's right. <laughs> um, I'll say that about that. It's, it's fantastic. Mm. Everything David has said is true. I was not in international division, but mm. I was in the previous policy position. Um, yeah, you saw my questions, so I'll yeah. ask Jazz to go on with you. Okay. <laughs> replan. Yeah. Um, I guess as in the current climate that we are, as international engagement and liaison increases, mm. how do you see uh, the role of the department um, changing? And, and I guess in, in touching on that, how do you see the grads' role, mm -hmm. what they will be doing? How do you see that sort of changing or evolving over the years? Yep. Look, it's going to be, it's, it's one of our biggest challenges. Uh, we have, as, as a new portfolio now, we obviously have the challenge of creating the dynamic across the different policy constructs we have that have come in, um, and that's the work in progress at the moment. Um, we're doing a, a review of our international footprint because we now have, if you like, an extended network, as other organisations have come in with offices overseas, be within the department or the broader portfolio. So uh, the, the concept, as I said, of that, that, that very broad range uh, of content areas, um, a policy officer and then obviously a grad as one of our junior policy officers is now going to have to be looking at domestic circumstance, international circumstance. You will, for example, in international division, be sitting um, in a team that might cover a particular geographic profile or a particular issue, say, transnational crime or people smuggling. Um, all of those issues are complex and all of them aren't linear. So you're going to have to both become the expert, if you like, of your particular country and or your particular region. And then you're going to lay across that. So in that region, in one region, for example, the priorities might be around um, trade and traveller facilitation and visas, etc. In the other, they're national security. Um, in the others, it's uh, you know countering foreign interference. It's it counterterrorism. So every role you will have will have a slightly different emphasis. Although the, the core, in terms of the skills you need, being smart, energetic, writing well, writing fast, learning the disciplines of the cabinet process, learning the disciplines of briefing ministers. They're the sort of things you're going to learn in those early days that hopefully as you move into those different content areas or you have to look across more broad um, spectrums of work, they're the things that will equip you well to do that. All right, sounds pretty interesting. Uh, I've got another one yeah. for you. Okay, I'll give time it a to, shot. Time to recover. Um, this will hopefully help the people that are successful applicants but also might help everyone that's currently watching that isn't app applying and is actually already a member. What do you find makes... or What are the qualities you find in an outstanding grad? Like what... What are the feedback that you, what's the feedback mm -hmm. you hear that you really like and the traits that you you look for if you had the choice yourself to sure. choose them? Um, look, I think successful grads come from uh, the balance of um, self confidence and humility. We have, you know, you've all been selected above many others to join the department and you, you bring with you the skills uh, that you have developed through your, your period at university, some in the workforce, as our profile is quite broad. Um, the, the last thing we want is grads that come in and say, well, I have studied this at university, therefore I know. Um, you do, you do know lots, but <laughs> there's also a lot more to know. So bringing the humility to say, I'm here to bring the skills, knowledge and experience that I have um, with an enthusiasm and an energy. Home Affairs is probably one of the most dynamic portfolios I've ever worked in, and I've been working for 36 years in the public service. Um, our capacity has been tested, but we've all really enjoyed it, I think. And, and partly that comes down to the nature of the people and what they bring. You know, we're not a, an old bureaucracy. We aren't time watchers here. We are looking at nation building. We are looking at how do you bring to bear your skills and knowledge to achieve an outcome for government. So the government sets the agenda. We service the government of the day. When you have a portfolio as broad as home affairs, the ambitions are high. Um, we have an executive who wants to take this country forward. Um, our role is to support that. So you need the energy. You need the enthusiasm, you need the skills. Um, what we offer you is the support and the pathways that hopefully you can bring to bear the best of your skills, have the humility to learn uh, from others. You know, old people like me that have been around a few years can help you learn. Um, you know, take on mentorship, take on, take on relationships uh, outside your work area that says, you know, you as an individual need to be developed and you as a professional officer need to be developed. How can we join up to do that? 
Thank you. Yeah. I guess one final question. Yep. I guess drawing from 36 years of experience. Yes, what's yes, Sonny. Uh, yes. <laughs> what's something that sort of stuck with you, um, I guess, over the years and something you'd, you'd pass on to all the viewers? Um, be courageous. I mean, one of the things that we often say, you know, when you read APS papers, you know, some of the lexicons, you know, one of the criteria of getting into the senior executive, which I mean is, you know, is courage. Um, it applies at all levels. It, it's the courage of your convictions and the courage of your ideas. It's your ability to put them on the table, um, knowing that sometimes we'll go, yes, thank you so much. Um, we'll come back to that. Um, I'm a, f a firm uh, proponent of the concept that every idea has its day. I've watched things that other people have talked about be implemented five, seven years later, because perhaps the time isn't right. But if you don't have the idea, if you don't table the idea, um, it'll never uh, have the opportunity to be tested and never have the opportunity to be implemented. Um, it's very easy to fall into the, the, the setback to say, I'm here to serve my boss. No, you're here to challenge your boss. You're here to actually say, I've had some really good ideas. I've been reading all this and I bring a, a fresh mind and a fresh intellect to this problem. Um, maybe it can be this. Might be put aside, but I, I would really encourage everyone, and I think I've partly succeeded because I've, you know, I've been prepared to ask the dumb question, you know, and someone, you know, may turn around and say that's a dumb question. I say, okay, well, great, but I've at least asked it, uh, and then a couple of years later, you go, ha ha, my idea paid off. It's been implemented. So, um, bring your courage, uh, bring your enthusiasm. Well, thank you so much for your time today, David. That's right, I hope pleasure. That it's helped everyone listening, and it's definitely actually helped us. Cheers. Too, so thank, thank you very much. much. Uh, we'll actually cut now to a pre-recorded video about Jess's cohort's first six weeks. My time with the Department of Home Affairs so far has been a fantastic learning process in which I've learned so much about working for the APS and how this department makes a profound impact on the Australian community as a whole. My first six weeks here have been challenging and, and exciting. I've met so many new people from the graduate team who have given me so much insight into my career progression and the different areas within this department. And in that, I've gained a better understanding of how it works. I moved here not knowing anyone, and now I have a great new group of friends. My first six weeks within the program have been amazing. The grad team has been really supportive with the move down to Canberra, and I'm really surprised with the diversity of the grads that we have, and also the amount of opportunities that the grads are given within the program. It's interesting, it's different every day, Moving to Canberra was a very daunting task, however I was surprised at how vibrant and global this city is and within that I have made so many new friends in a very cosmopolitan environment. I've got a really, really great team who inspire me to learn and are pushing me already to decide what I want to do next. Moving down to Canberra from Sydney was a bit of a challenge but having the grad team there as some support was amazing. I've learned skills in a great team and feel like I'm already making a huge impact. I'm so appreciative of this offer and I cannot wait for what the year has to offer. I'm really loving living here and I wouldn't change it for anything. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that uh, short video of my fellow graduates from this <laughs> year. Um, so just a reminder to keep sending in questions and we'll get to them um, over the course of the evening. So on that note, I guess we'll touch on some more questions. We got one from Jade, uh, just wondering what are the highlights from this program and what other advice would you give uh, to, other, to other graduates? That's an interesting one. Do you want to? It is good. Um, no, it's a very good question and it's very relevant. I guess, you know, as, as I finished my graduate year, the one, the mm -hmm. highlight was the people. For sure. like, it was... Meeting such a variety of people, making so many friends, and I know that sounds like very casual and this is a job, but like it really does make the difference. And now that I've made all those friends in my graduate year, I can actually go back and contact them if something comes up in my current role. So I'm like, oh, I need to know something about visa. Oh, I know this person in that area. I can just give them a call. And that's so that's both my highlight and my advice is talk to as many people as you can. If like when you make it in and when you're talking, like, just be friendly to everyone. Make the most of every opportunity with every person. You never mm -hmm. know when it's going to be helpful and you never know when you're going to make a friend. It doesn't all have to be business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'd agree. I mean, touching on that, it's, it's the friends and the people that sort of help you when, uh, when times are tough and, and you're sort of away from home, family and friends, and, and they're who you draw upon. Um, so, um, yeah, much the same. That would be that. And, and also, the 
one of the highlights, I guess, just what a lot of the executives, senior executives that you think are otherwise very busy, um, they've always got plenty of time to, to give you a, a, a word or, or a lending hand. So that's um, it's, it's really warming, you know, I guess, and makes things easier. Definitely, I agree. They're so friendly. You can talk, really talk to anyone. Mm. Uh, we have another question in from Bob. Thank you for all your questions, Bob. We really appreciate it. Um, do graduates choose where they complete their three rotations or does the department decide? And how is a decision reached at the end of the graduate program about where one works? Do you want to take it it's, away? Uh, yeah, well, it's, always a, it's always a hot topic where, where our graduates going to end up. So graduates, although they don't choose, um, they do nominate um, some preferred streams of where they want to end up, I guess. Um, the grad team a lot of the time we'll liaise with, uh, with yourself and, and, and have a sit down um, and, and talk about where you want to end up. Um, over the course of the year, it's sort of, you get a taste of a lot of different areas about where you might want to go or what you think is interesting. And, and, and nothing set in stone, I guess, that's the key message. It's always, a, it's a two-way feedback process so the grad team is always willing to listen um, as long as you're willing to pitch and put forward your ideas. I definitely agree, Jess. Yeah, it's all about, like, if you don't say it to the grad team, they're not going to know. And it's not, it's not like you've got your, your little hole pigeoned out for you. Like, communicate their people where people, like, if they know that you're really interested in a certain area, they'll do their best. They're lovely people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really just about communication and hope for the best. Yeah. And in saying that, I mean, it's not really, um, I mean, a lot of people come in with, a, with an idea of where they want to end up and they're sort of stuck with those you know, areas, but what you'll find is as you go through the process and um, I suppose get experience in different areas, you, you'll find things that surprise you. So it, I guess it's open mind, coming in with an open mind is, is definitely helpful. Definitely. Yeah. Take it away. Uh, so this one's from Jatinda. Uh, my wife has done Masters in Information System. Is there any scope for her? Yes. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> We encourage a range of qualifications and of detailed information in the departments on their recruitment page. But basically, like as we said earlier, we're both from science backgrounds, and you wouldn't think that there's a vocation for us, but there really is. So, look, any any qualification is welcome. And just from the top of my head, that sounds like something that would be very handy. So, yeah, of course, please apply. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. So, I've got one from Andrew. Um, so, broadly, is there an age consideration for graduates? Sorry about that, we just had some technical issues, but we're uh, back up and running. And we'll uh, redo that whole question just yeah, in case. Yeah, we'll just repeat Matt's question. So Matt asks, are staff members that have completed the grad program looked at more favourably um, than those that who haven't been applying for promotions? Um, and basically, as we were saying, not quite, no. Um, every job is assessed based on merit. So um, although it doesn't specifically favour you in, 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 in one sense, um, the grad program does help you gain many um, skills and experience along the way that would, I guess, ultimately help you with that application. Yep, basically that's true. Doesn't change anything. Uh, gives you help, but no, it's not. It's not looked at in the criteria. Thank you very much for your questions. We'll, we've still got a few more that we'll answer la later, but right now we'd like to introduce our third and final guest, Melissa Go Lightly, Deputy Secretary of Visa and Citizenship Services. Thank you very much for coming. Hi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> this is really great. <laughs> <laughs> also, apologies again for our system just dropping down. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just noticed that outside. Sorry. <laughs> I promise I didn't break it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. Yeah. So Melissa actually started off as a grad. I did. And has now reached lofty heights of DepSec. <laughs> yes, see, what can happen? Yeah, yeah. So, I guess you've worked through a number of federal agencies and, yeah, and along yeah. the way you've ended up here. Yes, yeah. I have, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I started as a grade in the Australian National Audit Office, um, which still exists. <laughs> um, I didn't break that either. Um, and uh, from there I went into um, a policy and program department and in those days it was called Department of Employment and Workplace Relations. And uh, it uh, is now called Jobs and Innovation. And yeah. so, yeah, so it's still there too, just with a different name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and from there on to Department of Human Services and uh, on to here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, worked across a, quite a number of areas in the APS, which I think just goes to show how varied yeah. the work can be and within each of those departments I did about five different jobs anyway so um, yeah lots lots to consider lots to learn lots to experience 
um, across the whole APS and the graduate program is a really good way of getting an entry Definitely. into <laughs> into what a what's possible but um, just uh, um, learning what's possible but but the opportunities that it gives you throughout your career it's just amazing oh, yeah well really very glad I came in as a graduate <laughs> yeah. so we've got a lot to look forward to you <laughs> have you have it's a really big year it's a big adjustment of course particularly those for those people who have to move to Canberra um, and you know away from family away from friends um, but it's also a big adjustment from uni to full-on work <laughs> I mean obviously lots of us work through uni but um, but it's you know full-time intense lots expected of you but there's also lots um, to learn in that year and I think that's the other thing it's probably the only time in your career that anywhere whether it's here or anywhere else that um, public service private sector that you'll get a whole year mm. devoted to your own development mm. um, and so you need to take that opportunity <laughs> <laughs> but um, but the rotations I think are really great you know they get to uh, give you a taste of what all the different areas of the department are and sometimes the temptation is to select areas or rotations that might be um, very similar to what you've already done or to your qualifications and I would actually say make sure you do at least one rotation in a completely unrelated area um, in fact try and do all three <laughs> um, because you just don't know what you don't know and um, I had that opportunity to do three completely different rotations and you learn something from all of them uh, but most importantly you learn to not be blinkered about what might be possible and uh, that's that was a big thing for me coming out of the graduate year as well yeah wonderful thank you very much yeah. um i have a question that's actually out of my interest as well but i hope yeah. everyone else can glean a little bit of information from it you've mentioned obviously you've been through a few different departments yeah. but also just mentioned the change within departments as well yes yeah. um people who are applying have obviously been looking and keeping an eye on the different departments updates and things oh, and yeah. will have noticed the change from department of immigration and border protection to the department of home affairs yeah and i'm wondering do you think this will have a big effect in the change if a grad were to apply if they're applying for immigration versus mm. home affairs, has mm. it changed anything or in your group specifically or in general? Uh, look, I think it hasn't changed um, what how you would apply. <laughs> it might it has definitely changed what options are available. Um, because of course now home affairs does even more things yeah. than um, immigration and border protection did you know only three months ago so <laughs> so it, it it changes what again what's possible um, in terms of uh, opportunities what you can learn uh, what rotations will be available what things you'll be exposed to so yeah it's just made a broader range and the more experience that you have the more you're exposed to the more competitive you are in the next um, step that you make mm. in the public service or indeed outside so all of these skills that you're learning are as um, valuable in the private sector as they are in the public sector so that's the other fantastic thing I think mm. yeah. good news that's a yeah. good point I think when I <laughs> not when that I, I want everyone to go to the private sector <laughs> <laughs> I want you to stay in the public sector yeah. but um, uh, and look you know I, my background is in accounting I'm a bachelor of business and so it, particularly when I went through the more traditional pathway would have been into chartered accounting or tax work etc um, but the opportunity came up for me to join the public service and honestly I've never looked back yeah, mm. never regretted that decision Wonderful. yeah it's a good point I think when I was applying last year we were still under DIVP Department of um, Immigration and Border Protection and, yeah. and now with Home Affairs there's ASIO and Officer Transport Security so you never know yeah. where, uh, where um, you know, it could lead to and, um, and, and uh, what opportunities yeah. you get yeah. yeah the work was very varied anyway yeah. and it's just got more so yeah so did you, I guess, ever, when you started as a grad, did you ever think you'd reach to where you did? And no. <laughs> I thought I'd be... I'm actually originally from Rockhampton in Queensland, and I thought oh, I'll be home in two years, you know, like <laughs> doing something else. I don't know what. But, yeah, it's 
been more than two years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's uh, no, I never ever thought. And the piece of advice I would give to people is apply for jobs, or look for jobs, or look for experiences that are going to stretch you by all means, but that you're going to enjoy. Um, I've never actually been one that sort of thought about level. Um, I want to enjoy what I'm doing and if you do that you do well and you know advancement will come and opportunities will come as a result of you doing well. Um, that's one thing again doesn't matter what workplace you're in, um, good performance stands out and people want good performers. They don't want people um, who are struggling or they don't want to put people through that you know um, that's not nice for anybody. Mm -hmm. So. Or someone that doesn't like what they're doing, that shows, you know, and we see that in all walks of life. So that would be the advice I'd give anyone. Look for things that you, A, are going to enjoy doing, that, but don't mix that up with what you're comfortable with. It's got to stretch you, you've got to learn, you've got to be continuing to grow and build new skills, but look for the enjoyment. And, and the rest will follow. Yeah. yeah, that's a great piece of advice for, I guess, not only grads, but yeah. people who've been in the APS for decades. Yeah. If you're not enjoying it, you're, you're doing Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. Just like they tell you in school, don't do subjects you don't like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, ha it, it's harder to perform. It's not mm. that you won't, but it's harder. And, you know, life's too short. <laughs> I love what you do. I yeah. definitely agree. Yeah. Um, maybe one last quick question for anyone. Just... um. Deputy Secretary of Visa and Citizenship, can you give us maybe a glimpse of what, what kind of work that entails, especially yeah. for a grad, so really, really baseline? What's yeah, going on? well, <laughs> how long has it got? <laughs> a um, oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, um, the, the whole aim of the group is to make sure that the people coming to Australia are the people that should be coming, so they, they meet their obligations. But even before that, at the whole point is um, uh, Australia's economy is actually these days very much built around um, a couple of key industries, and one of them is tourism, um, another one is education, a third of a third of Australia's economy is around education. So. Um, uh, for example, if our therefore our tourist and student visas don't work, if that system doesn't work, then the country suffers economically, uh, let alone all of the wonderful um, diversity that um, that those people bring to us. So it's it's a very key part of Australia continuing to be um, a place that is resilient, that has a good economical base and something and, and, a, and a place that can grow. So, um, but also visas are the way that we attract others with skills that we might not have, might have gaps in our own economy. So new emerging industries or um, industries where we just, our internal demand can't keep up sorry, our internal supply mm -hmm. can't keep up with the demand. So it's it's a really important part of advancing Australia. Definitely. Um, but equally, while we welcome all of those people, whether it be for a week's holiday mm -hmm. <laughs> or for something more permanently, um, that there are obligations and uh, we take seriously that border protection stuff, um, the protection of our own um, citizens and so yeah you know we want you to behave <laughs> when you're here and not do something bad <laughs> so there's a whole lot of that um, and then of course we've got the citizenship side and that is such a valuable commodity um, in that it's where we uh, very much um, commit to signing up to what it means to be Australian and share in the values that the rest of the community has. Um, you make the decision that yes, you want to join that community and be a very um, positive influence on that community. So, uh, and citizenship once conferred very hard to um, remove it. So we take very seriously that decision making that goes around whether somebody 
has met the standard for citizenship. So again, very we really do want people to take that step. We would we want to welcome people into the community as citizens. But there's also an obligation to be met as well. So um, everything we do, <laughs> and there's a whole lot of stuff that lies under it, but they're the two goals. Life-changing things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are very much so for the country as a whole, but of course for the individuals um, that are getting the visa or citizenship, and of course for their workmates, their fellow holiday makers, their fellow students. The influence is, um, is very wide and very deep. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you very much, Melissa, for your That's time. Okay. We do appreciate your uh, experience. Anytime. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, um, for tuning in tonight. We're going to quickly squeeze in one question uh, before we go in. Um, so let's get, get, it get that out. <laughs> right. Oh, here we go. We've got a citizenship one. Oh, uh, so I have a curious answer. citizenship requirement. I wanted to ask if applicants needed to be an Australian citizen at the time of application or at the time of commencement, if successful. Mm. So uh, with this one, uh, just to wrap up, I guess you need to be an Australian citizen by April 20, the day applications close. Um, so that's the, uh, I guess, requirement for citizenship. Um, that's all we have time for today. We do thank you all very much for tuning in and asking all the questions. Um, if you have any further questions, feel free to email us, um, Whirlpool Forums, LinkedIn, Facebook, leave a comment below. Um, don't hesitate, and the grad team will uh, definitely get back to you with that one. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you for having me. Thank you.